Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to continue our investigation of the action, origin, insertion, and innervation for muscles of the lower extremity. First up, we'll investigate a group of muscles referred to as the adductors, and given the name for this group of muscles, we get an idea of their primary action, which is to adduct the hip. And these muscles include the adductor magnus, longus, and brevis. Now, something that's unique to note here, the name of these muscles not only indicate their respective action, but also the size of the muscle as well. For example, the adductor magnus is very large, the adductor longus is long, and the adductor brevis is relatively short. So first up, we have the adductor magnus, and the primary action for this muscle is adduction of the hip, coupled with hip flexion and hip extension. Now its origin, or where it originates, is primarily on the pubis and on the ischial tuberosity. So on our image, we'll place our origin point here. Next, this muscle inserts on the gluteal tuberosity, the posterior aspect of the femur, specifically which is on the supracondylar line, and on the adductor tubercle. So we'll mark those insertion points here. Now notice that two of the circles are open, which is meant to indicate that these insertion points are actually seen on the posterior aspect of the femur. It's our more superior open circle that showcases the location of the gluteal tuberosity, and the more distal open circle that signals the location of the medial supracondylar line again, which are all on the posterior aspect of the femur. And the completely filled blue circle represents the location of the adductor tubercle. And the nerve that innervates this muscle is both the obturator and sciatic nerve. Next, we have the adductor longus, and the primary action for this muscle is hip adduction. Now, its origin, or where it originates, is on the pubis, near the pubic symphysis. So, here's where we'll note the origin on our image. Next, its insertion is on the posterior femur, and we'll show that here on our image. And again, you'll notice that our open circle here is meant to indicate that it's on the posterior aspect of the femur. And the nerve that innervates this muscle is referred to as the obturator nerve. Next, in our group of adductor muscles, we have the adductor brevis, and the primary action for this muscle is adduction of the hip. Now, its origin is primarily on the anterior aspect of the pubis, and we'll make a note of where that is on our image here. And its insertion is on the posterior femur, and we'll add that to our image using an open circle to indicate that it's on the posterior aspect. And the nerve that innervates this muscle is referred to as the obturator nerve. Next up, we'll investigate a group of muscles referred to as the hamstrings. And given the location of this group of muscles, we get an idea of their primary action, which is to extend the hip and flex the knee. And these muscles include the biceps femoris, semimembranosus, and the semitendinosus. So first up, we'll start with the biceps femoris. Now, as we start with this muscle, it's important to notice the prefix bi here, which means two. And for us, that should serve as an indication that we have two components to this muscle. And these components are the long head and the short head. And for this image, we'll start with the short head, which is deep to the long head. So specifically, the action produced by this portion of the biceps femoris is knee flexion and external rotation. Its origin is on the linea aspera and the lateral supracondylar line, and we'll show that on our image here. And its insertion is on the head of the fibula, and we'll show that on our image here. And lastly, its innervation is the sciatic nerve. Next is the long head of the biceps femoris. Now, as a reminder, the long head of the biceps femoris is superficial to the short head of the biceps femoris. So specifically, the action produced by this portion of the biceps femoris is knee flexion, external rotation, and it also performs extension of the hip. 
and its origin is on the issue of tuberosity, and we'll show that on our image here. Its insertion is also on the head of the fibula, and we'll show that on our image here. And lastly, its innervation is the sciatic nerve. The next muscle of the hamstrings that we'll investigate is the semitendinosus, which is directly in line with and next to the long head of the biceps femoris. And specifically, the action produced by this muscle is knee flexion and internal rotation. It also helps to perform hip extension. And its origin is on the issue of tuberosity, and we'll show that on our image here. Next, its insertion is on the medial surface of the proximal tibia, just below where we'll find the insertion of the semimembranosus, and we'll show that on our image here. And lastly, its innervation is the sciatic nerve. The next muscle of the hamstrings that we'll investigate is the semimembranosus, which is deep to the semitendinosus. And specifically, the action produced by this muscle is knee flexion and internal rotation. It also helps us to perform hip extension. And its origin is on the issue of tuberosity, and we'll show that on our image here. And its insertion is on the medial condyle of the tibia, on the most medial aspect, and we'll show that on our image here. And lastly, its innervation is the sciatic nerve. Next up, we'll investigate a group of muscles referred to as the pes and serine group. And what makes these muscles unique is the common insertion that they share. And of these muscles, we've already identified the semitendinosus, which is also a member of the pes and serine group. But the muscles that we have not yet discussed that belong to this group are the sartorius and the gracilis muscles. With that, the next muscle we'll investigate that belongs to the pes and serine group is the sartorius. And specifically, the action produced by this muscle is knee flexion and internal rotation. It also helps us to perform hip flexion, hip abduction, and hip external rotation. Its origin is on the anterior superior iliac spine, and we'll show that on our image here. And its insertion is on the medial surface of the proximal tibia, at the same location as the semitendinosus, and we'll show that on our image here. And lastly, its innervation is the femoral nerve. The next muscle that we'll investigate here that belongs to the pes and serine group is the gracilis. And the action produced by this muscle is knee flexion, internal rotation, along with hip adduction. Its origin is on the pubis, and we'll show that on our image here. Its insertion is on the medial surface of the tibia at the same location as the semitendinosus and the sartorius, and we'll show that on our image here. And lastly, its innervation is the obturator nerve. Now that we've covered the muscles of the pes and serine group, let's transition to discussing other muscles of the lower extremity. The next muscle that we'll investigate is called the pectineus, and the action produced by this muscle is hip adduction and hip flexion. Its origin is on the superior pubic ramus, and we'll show that on our image here. Its insertion is on the posterior aspect of the femur, just underneath the lesser trochanter. And as we've done before, we'll use an open circle to show that it's here on our image, just on the posterior aspect. And lastly, its innervation is from both the femoral and obturator nerves. The next muscle that we'll investigate is called the tibialis anterior. And based on the name, we know that this muscle is on the tibia and that it's on the anterior aspect. The action of this muscle is dorsiflexion of the ankle, and it also helps to produce inversion of the foot. Its origin is on the lateral condyle of the tibia, and it also attaches to the interosseous membrane that joins the tibia and fibula together. And we'll show those origin points on our image here. Its insertion is on the plantar aspect of the foot, specifically to the first metatarsal and medial cuneiform, and we'll show that here. And lastly, its innervation is from the fibular nerve. The next muscle that we'll investigate is called the extensor digitorum longus, 
And based on the name, we get an idea of its action, which is extension. We know where it attaches, which is on the digits of the foot. And we get the idea that this muscle is relatively long. So with that, the action of this muscle is extension of the toes, specifically toes two through five, and it also assists with dorsiflexion of the ankle. Its origin is in two locations. The first is on the lateral condyle of the tibia and the upper portion of the fibula, and we'll show those origin points here. Its insertion is on the distal phalanges of digits two through five, and we'll show that on the image here. And lastly, its innervation is from the fibular nerve. The next muscle that we'll investigate is called the extensor hallucis longus. And based on the name, similar to the last muscle, we get an idea of its action, which is extension. And the name hallucis gives us an idea of where it attaches, which is on the great toe. And we also get the idea that this muscle is relatively long. So with that, the action of this muscle is extension of the great toe, and it also performs dorsiflexion of the ankle. Its origin is on the anterior surface of the fibula and the interosseous membrane that's situated between the tibia and fibula, and we'll show those origin points here on the image. And its insertion is on the dorsal aspect of the distal phalanx, specifically of the great toe, and we'll show that on the image here. And lastly, its innervation is from the fibular nerve. The last group of muscles that we'll take a look at are either referred to as the fibularis muscles and or the perineal muscles. And this group of muscles are located on the lateral aspect of the lower leg right around the fibula, hence the name fibularis muscles. Their names include the fibularis longus, fibularis brevis, and the fibularis tertius. And the location of these muscles gives us an indication that its primary action includes eversion of the foot. The first muscle of this group that we'll investigate is called the fibularis longus. And based on its name, we get an idea of its size, meaning that it's long. Now, the action of this muscle is plantar flexion of the ankle, and it also assists with performing eversion of the foot. Its origin is on the head of the fibula and the upper portions of the fibula as well. And we'll show both of these origin points here on the image. And its insertion is on the plantar surface of the foot, specifically to the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform, and we'll show that on the image here. And lastly, its innervation is from the fibular nerve. The next muscle on our list is called the fibularis brevis, and based on its name, we get an idea of its size, and for note-taking purposes, brevis means short. So if you can associate the word brief with short, or brevis with short, then you'll remember it. Now, the action of this muscle is plantar flexion of the ankle along with eversion of the foot. Its origin is on the lower and lateral portions of the fibula, and will show its origin point here on the image. Its insertion is on the base of the fifth metatarsal, and we'll show that on the image here. And lastly, its innervation is from the fibular nerve. The next and last muscle of this group is called the fibularis tertius. Now, the action of this muscle is dorsiflexion of the ankle and eversion of the foot. Its origin is on the medial surface of the fibula and the interosseous membrane that joins the tibia and fibula together, and we'll show that on the image here. Its insertion is on the fifth metatarsal, and we'll show that here. And lastly, its innervation is from the fibular nerve. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you gained value out of it, and if you did, please feel free to check out the next video.